Hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to the Hudson Records Listening Club. Um, it's been about three or four years, I think, since we last did one. Um, there was a, a world event going on when we started these. Um, thankfully, it's over. And um, yeah, we're here back with Outliers to um, have a listen to their new album. Uh, yeah, this is Jenny. Hello. Oh. Up in Shetland, and it's blowing an absolute gale outside. So there we go. Usual, usual, <laughs> usual stuff up in Shetland. I'm uh, I'm Boo, Fewer Dean. I'm in Halsey Manor, in probably the folkiest room in the world. And, <laughs> and within Halsey Manor, there's a room with all the uh, lots of uh, archive stuff. So uh, there you go. I'm in the very centre of things. And who are you, other person? Me. <laughs> Yes. I'm, I'm Chris Pepper, and I'm in Cambridgeshire. Well, right. North, uh, Northamptonshire, actually. Oh. Yeah, that's where I live. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good chat, wasn't it? So, was good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so this is the first track, I think, it's starting. And one of the last ones we wrote, I think. Was it? I don't remember. <laughs> but a big part of making this record is... Uh, Jen and I would fiddle around on our laptops in our in our rooms, and they would send them to you, Chris, and you you made them sound good, didn't you? I did my best, yes. Well, you yeah. did very well. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> did you did you like what we were sending you, or was it? Were I you did. Tearing your hair out. Yeah. I'm tr- I'm trying to remember what this one, how this one arrived. I think it was pretty much in, in pieces. <laughs> yeah. I can't really remember. Can you remember? I think it was pretty much like this, but you've made it sound loads better. And um, <laughs> and we had a, quite a discussion when you mix it, going back and forth about how loud the sea should be on it, so, so you can hear the sea. Okay, yeah. And that was uh, that was me and Jenny's first row because I wanted it this loud <laughs> and you didn't. It was <laughs> awful. Yeah. The first of many. Yeah. The first of. <laughs> <laughs> And are you in the room where you recorded, Jenny, right now? I am. you recorded? Yeah, looking out at the... Well, it was recorded. This track was written at uh, Midsummer. So I think Boo sent the sort of the entire backing to the track, pretty much. Right. And uh, said, can you add some words? And I'd just been out for this huge walk along the west coast of the South Mainland, where I live. And it made me think of that, so I came back and wrote those words and sang it, looking out the window at all the cars oh. driving past. <laughs> nice. We talked a lot about writing in that I'd, I'd met Jenny at one of my songwriting workshops and we decided to ignore everything I'd ever said there. So the songs don't have conventional verses and choruses or anything. So it was, uh, it was quite exciting to write songs that broke rules. So for example, this one, it's just the same all the way through, but I really love it. I remember when you sent this mix, Chris, I think it was might have been an early mix you sent, but I remember being mm. really excited that we'd done yeah. something good. Yeah, something unlike anything we'd done before, isn't it? Yeah, or yeah, or yeah. Do you guys and also, worked before? Yeah, worked yeah, together I've before no, quite a yeah. lot. I've, I've, I've known Sis, Chris since he was living at his parents, and I'm probably the same age as his parents. And I used to have to go around his parents' house and say, "Hello, I've come to play with Chris." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they let you in. <laughs> they let him in. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. So where did the? Um, so you guys are all currently as we've found out already um scattered across the uk right now um and who's normally up in glasgow but is that mm. where the name outliers came from then what's what's the i think i think i had a, another word with out in it and and you said no what about outliers? It's out. I think. No. <laughs> it's it's out. Out. I think I said something like, out with or something like that, and you went, no, that's rubbish. And then you came up with outliers. <laughs> so. I think it felt like it fitted what we were doing quite well, because it feels like the music is is an outlier to what we both 
normally, normally do. do. And also it was all written and the three of us kind of worked on it in isolation in different parts of the country. And so it felt like we were outliers to each other as well, I suppose. Yeah. This is me singing now. This isn't Jenny, just in case anyone's <laughs> curious. So sometimes Jenny sings, sometimes I sing, and sometimes there's no singing at all. Madness. Um, <laughs> so I I did this vocal re- quite late at night because I didn't want to wake people up. I'm right up close to the mic going, Bleh. and you, I really <laughs> love the treatment you put on it. Yeah, I was thinking about um, I was thinking about that. As a, um, yeah, sometimes the recordings that would come back were sort of not ideal because you were doing them late at night and but on your own and stuff. So it was trying to find ways of making stuff sound cool. I couldn't really make it sound like a really upfront kind of pristine sounding thing. So I kind of tried to give things their own little vibes. Strange. I think I that this. was brilliant though. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really, really love this. Sound, yeah. The vocal sound on this is great. Yeah, it's some sort of distortion on there, isn't there? Some sort of yeah, decapitator or something. Who did all yeah. the um? Who did all the? I just could plug in that. Um, yeah. Who did all the kind of synthy stuff on it? Though? I think this. I think this one's me, isn't it? Then. I think so. And yeah. then you did the really lovely ethereal. They're singing. You can hear now. It's so brilliant. Mm. And. Um, yeah, but I actually I didn't really do much home recording until lockdown. So this a lot of these first ones were done on Darish Band, and then because you had Logic and you were sending me stuff, I had to get Logic, and it started. I absolutely I just can't get enough of, of of home recording now. I really love love doing it. So a lot of these grooves and loops and stuff were probably technically wrong but I really like them they're all distorted and a bit broken sounding but I like them yeah I was also th- did- thinking um you like when we first met you probably wouldn't have made this album because you weren't doing any sort of recording no at home. you were coming to me to do your demos and stuff weren't you? I know yeah that's right because I didn't trust myself mm. Do you trust yourself is, now? <laughs> I do. I really like. I really like it. Now you recorded this one, didn't you? Yeah. So this, I think I put down a couple of guitars and the the vocal, obviously. <laughs> um, but this, the, I really enjoyed the way that we actually got together to on Zoom. So yes. in this kind of setup to write the songs, and this was a quite a good example of that that we met up for a, an hour every couple of weeks and didn't have any preconceived ideas about what we were going to write about and the day that we met up to chat I think we were meeting at 10 o'clock and at 9 o'clock r- roughly 9 o'clock I'd been speaking to a friend of mine called Helen Dennerly who's a sculptor and she was telling me about this song thrush in her garden and I was trying to explain to Boo what Helen does and it's really hard without seeing pictures because it's just her work is incredible anyway we discussed Helen for a bit and then we started writing this song Salvage and it's gone yeah I was going to say it's gone on to be the name of one of her new exhibitions as well so oh that's really cool so she takes scrap and turns them into beautiful things basically doesn't she that's her thing and um and did you record this song thrush that we hear I can't remember about this I can't remember that with that song thrush. Or was it? It might be one you found online. I can't remember. Well, I've got one in the flat as, anyway. <laughs> company. Is that Helen who owned the place we did the Living Mountain? At? Yes, exactly. Where we recorded the Living Mountain. Yeah. So you, you drive. Her house is down a really long track and all the way down the track there's these animals made out of metal so a big stag and a, a camel and a huge iguana over the a, a huge bit of the lawn and just incredible work we've just done one gig so far which was 
still probably one of my favorite gigs ever I, i'd loved it but i remember this was the first song that we played that was acoustic and um i really loved the gig because when we started i think people were a bit like oh what's going on <laughs> and then we sort of won them over it was a really lovely feeling wasn't it i think this this one helped because it sounded nice and acoustic <laughs> And you've got Grant uh, Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. All the live show, gigs. Yeah. yeah, and he's doing all the the difficult the difficult stuff. <laughs> uh, so he's using some of some of the album stems, and we're playing playing with it. We adapted some of them as well, so they're not quite the same as the album because we wanted it to, to be a good show. And um, this is exciting. I can't remember what comes next. No, we neither. <laughs> Oh, this is lines. This is quite. This is, this is quite. An, this is a, probably the the first one of, that you mix, yeah. isn't it? I reckon. Yeah, I reckon so. And this one. Such felt, a buzz. So, felt really celebratory. It was really good. Mm. So. This was definitely a garage band one, and then it's me. Me trying to turn it on or something. Yeah, <laughs> the good job you managed. <laughs> you succeeded. Yeah. This is the only track with somebody else on it. Is this what's he called? Pete. What's Pete's name? Um, Harvey. Pete Harvey, because yeah. you work with him. Fantastic cello player. Absolutely fantastic. And there's some beautiful, so the, lots of kind of harmonic strings and yeah, it. yeah. He's fantastic, Pete. I, I really like, you give him something and it comes back and it's beyond what you thought you could imagine, you know. It's been quite fun for the developing the live gigs because it's meant that I could buy a vocal reverb pedal. So I just, yes, I'm just having a lot of fun. <laughs> I bought a tiny tre I bought a tiny tremolo pedal, Chris. What do you think about that? A tiny we, tremolo pedal. Well, <laughs> I, because we were using Jenny's and it was a bit hissy, wasn't it? So, yeah. so I thought I'd get my and it's it really, it's, it's about that big. It's uh, really, okay. What a time! To, what a time to be alive! Eh? <laughs> yeah, incredible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, ben told me you bought a little keyboard as well. Did you use that? I I, I did. I, I brought it to the rehearsal. It's called the Mini Freak, and <laughs> and, and and basically I had to sack it because uh, every time every time I pressed it, Grant and Jenny would it just it, it too got freakish. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it's really like, cool. It's it will really work good. at some point. Um, yeah, I've been making some little recordings with a view to the future. It's really yeah. fantastic, and um, so that'll be for the next album, that uh, the Mini Freak. <laughs> and, and my tiny tremolo. Just wait. <laughs> All the small things. <laughs> All the small things. Yeah, minions, dear tiny. Yeah. That's a beautiful there's, cello. There's cello. Pete coming in. When we're famous, can we can we can we have him on the tour as well? Jenny? That'd be good. Yeah, I'd like that. <laughs> Living when are we going to be famous again? <laughs> I forget. After this goes out. Yeah, yeah exactly. After this goes out, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of what you did with this, so we gave all of this to you, Chris, but you made some decisions about when things dropped out, and came in and stuff. Yeah. So you really, you, you really had a hand in shaping this one because when I sent it to you, it was pretty much just all the way through, you know. Yeah, you let me um, have fun with it basically a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and affecting my voice there and stuff like that. And I was, I was obsessed with a particular reverb when I was doing this as well, so that's why Jenny's got all of these... Uh, oh, I love it. <laughs> Which one is it? An AMS, AMS reverb. Oh, like AMS, like the 80s one, yeah? Yeah, like an 80s thing, yeah. Yeah, I, re I remember the very first studios I worked in, there was like, oh, you bring out the AMS. Yeah. yeah. Like, wow. It's a digital reverb, isn't it? It's yeah. Like, yeah. It's, got, it's got a specific sound to it. 
that's funny when that happens, isn't it? And you get like obsessed with certain plugins or whatever, yeah. and you, you kind of end up with a whole stream of albums just with yeah. the same plugin, same reverb on it, all of them. You know? This is this is a really important one uh, because I ha- I came up with this track, and then when he thought we could do a song over it, but then Jenny. Tell it, tell them what, where, where this comes from because I, this this was this was really special for me when this one came to be. Yeah, you sort of emailed it across um, without any words or speaking or music, without any singing on it, and said yeah. it needs something, but I don't know what. And I've been doing a project using archive material, specifically about Shetland, and there was a conversation between these two women, uh, Jean and Christine Morrison from nesting in Shetland and they were chatting to a field recorder called Alan Bruford about natural plant dyes and I dragged this track of the, this recording of them speaking and placed it just randomly in this piece and it just worked really well and something about their voices and yeah. the words that they're saying and uh, yeah, it's just a really lovely minute of conversation and no singing on this. But well, you do some singing towards the do end, don't you? But it's worth re- singing. Reverby, reverby ooze. Some AMS singing. <laughs> well, there they but go. But this was this was one where I I thought I felt is this going to work at a gig? And yet it was kind of a real high point, wasn't it? And someone at the end came up and said, "Oh, I've got to have that that track." You know, it was really nice to hear those those voices booming out of a PA it was sort of mm-hmm. nice because you can hear if you listen carefully you can hear the sound of the, the, the clock ticking in the room with them and all that so to me what we're doing is this mixture of old and new and mm-hmm. putting them together and see what happens in this fun right. it could be Get both days, I suppose. Both Jenny and I have a shared love of a band called Winged Victory for the Sullen. <laughs> and I think this is maybe a little reminiscent of them, isn't it? That they're just sort of holding an atmosphere for a long time. <laughs> this has got my favourite bit on the record, which is you when you do your little skippy bit of singing. <laughs> Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to do much with this, Chris? Um, I remember um having to to work on though on that those voices a bit to try and get them to sort of denoise it a bit and stuff so you could sort of hear them um, a bit clearer. But I remember it was quite a, quite a, um, yeah it was a bit tricky to sort of balance to find out how to how to balance them without them being too too loud and, and um, yeah or too quiet basically. And other than that, it was just doing my old AMS trick with the, with the voices here. <laughs> <laughs> what shall I do on this yeah. track? <laughs> what have you used to make the groove there? Is that like the guitar you- or something? Yeah, there's feeding back guitar. I go like that, and um, and the the dum 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 dum, dum, yeah. dum thing was was just uh, it was a thing you told me about. Uh, I can't remember. It's a drum, a vintage drum machine thing, and I just rolled everything off. So it was just you just got the sort of heartbeaty feel. What's it got? Spark. Oh, the Sparks thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spark. 
like, oh, it's really bright, that. But so I just rolled everything off and I just liked to, like, r rumbling about underneath it all. But the piano is uh, like a loop, isn't it? You, something you it's found? A loop, yeah, it's a, it's a loop I found, yeah. I did try and play it on my piano, but I just like the, the sounds mm. of this. Again, I, I I did really brutal EQ on it and stuff, you know. I mean, it's funny because when we were doing these things, we're like, I don't think we ever thought they were particularly going to be heard. We were just in, enjoying ourselves. So I'd send things to Jenny and go, is that all right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is another early one. This is a, I love this song because when we would meet, we would say, what are we going to write about today? And Jenny came to the meeting and said, I've got nothing. I've got no words. I think so it was quite this, in the in the depths of lockdown <laughs> when yeah. nothing much was happening. And so I said, that's it. Let's write a song about... So it became a song about if you've been on your own all day and you haven't heard your own voice. Quite weird if you don't speak to the afternoon, the first time you speak and you feel it in your chest and stuff like that. Yeah, because we never, we never intended to necessarily make an album. When we were just, no. just going to write some songs and then for some reason we started recording them. And then I think when we had... 10 or 12 tracks I sent it to sent it to Andy and said just yeah thank just you so much listen to this <laughs> see what you think thank you can't thank you enough Andy this I this yeah. most excited I've been about a record for a long long time so. oh, it's brilliant I, I remember when yeah. Jenny sent me it and I just thought well this is pretty good <laughs> <laughs> I was it was kind of almost sending it to you for feedback and you were like yeah we'll put it out on the record label and I was like oh okay <laughs> amazing <laughs> so good and it kind of, I mean, I was going to say, I was going to ask about artwork because, as well, mm. the, uh, yeah. Yeah. the image and everything just kind of has really set it off as well as like, yeah. it, I don't know, it works really well yeah. with, the, with, the, with the music and kind of, who, uh, who was it that did the image? Susan. And a Shetland based photographer called Susan Malloy. She's fantastic. Well, worth checking her out online. and. Um, she'd done some photos for me at one point and um, yeah just, <laughs> just love that on the on the record yeah so she did some photos for me and then um, I was looking through stuff on her Instagram actually and we were discussing album covers and saw that picture and just thought ooh you know that just really might do the trick so it's a picture of South Light the South Lighthouse on Farah. One of the things I really like about it is we've put no, we put no text on the front. Yeah. So it's just a beautiful piece of art. Although this one's been ruined by someone <laughs> scribbling all over it. There's some it. scribbling. I know. I know. You tried to you tried to stop us, didn't you? But... <laughs> I can't sell this one now, can I? <laughs> <laughs> and there's these other great images that we use for singles as well. They're, yeah. They're, yeah. I mean, this so one in particular is is really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So they're obviously, all obviously Susan. this is a decent image as well, you know. That's yeah. that's Ellie, our friend Ellie yeah. Luke. That was Ellie, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, they're they're all Susan's photos apart from that lovely one, the one of us looking cheery that was taken by Ellie Lucas. So yeah, my nice old to have. my old housemate. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this one, you you again, I sent it to you, and you said you'd, you'd write a poem for it. Yeah. Yeah. So doing things never do before, and I really liked making this groove. I remember it's a lot of it. It's things are things going backwards, and um, there's a noise in it which is just a glitch. And I, I, I got a sound and made it shorter and shorter and shorter and as short as could go, and looped it, and it's just like that. So it's all lots of things, but the best bit is you, Jenny. It's really not. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> Well, this is good. You did a really good thing with Jenny's voice on this, Chris, didn't you? Oh, yeah. This is the one with the pitch yeah. Yeah. pitch thing, isn't it? Scratch. It's a sort of demonic sort of quality <laughs> yeah. to it. It suits, it suits the words well. <laughs> Sketch colour. I, I heard a thing about that, actually, on um, a David Bowie Faces. Um, documentary. Imagine. On that last album he did, Black Star. Yeah. And um, a lot of that, I can't remember whether it was... Written. 
It was like it was like a constant fourth or fifth or seventh or there's, there's oh, some, I know you, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's something that runs through like a lot of the tracks on there like a, a strange harmony that kind of is on everything you know use using tech to do it so. I think I know what you mean yeah I can't remember what I did it might just be an octave thing it might have been, yeah. It sounds like on this one. I think I think at one point we talked about me reading it at the same time. I think maybe you did do that, and I just didn't. I don't think I used it. <laughs> I think right. that's. I think that's what happened. Sketches. I did think I, I, sound go- I think you <laughs> did, did it, sound- and then I tried this, and it just sort of sounded a bit taller and weirder, or something. A bit, a bit less gormless. <laughs> <laughs> well. And then we used a lot of sound. So there's the sound of a mm. bonfire here. I think the next track is heard, is it not? Uh, and this I have is to, my favourite, this one. Well, I have to really thank you for this, Andy, because I was I, I I wasn't sure about it, and now it's one of my favourite. I heard it on the radio the other day, and I thought I was like, so who's proud that? of it. Fantastic oh, yeah, singer. You, <laughs> and you did a brilliant mix on this, Chris. No, thank I you. Really, I, think, initially, you didn't want to put it on the record, Boo. No, I thought I was felt self-conscious about it. It's great. I love it now. I absolutely love it. And I got the, I've sung it outside of us as well. I sang this, uh, did a gig a couple of weeks ago in Queen's Hall with uh, John McCusker and sang it there. And it was, it just felt absolutely fantastic. So uh, thank you for making it, this on the record. It's all that we have for now. Just a lot. A lot of them are really actually quite simple songs, aren't they? Chordally and you know, two or three chords, some of them. And well, I thought this might be a bit, a bit fancy chordally. I think that was what I was worried about. But yeah, no, but it's. But it's no, not. I really like it. I think this is this to me is classically boo. It's, is it's it? Fair, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like this is what I would expect to come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that. Maybe that's why I would. Maybe I, that's why I was a bit resistant to it, but I'm. I think what you did with that piano, that's all. Yeah, it that's sounds... um, that's a, a, an octagon loop. It's one of those things where yeah. you know you press a key and then it plays the whole rhythm. Yeah, cool. and it's got the sort of filtered effect on it. So the chords can't have been too fancy because I was able to just do this on the keyboard. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it, you. you you transformed it. I remember I, this. I started this one in my. I've got my room, you know, in Finister. So I actually recorded the guitars in there. So this oh, I right. record them at home. Yeah, I did that with Finn. Finn oh, and Lake, okay. um, engineering. And I think I sang it there as well. Because I, 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 yeah, it was getting a bit noisy in my flat. So. <laughs> and there's the mind blowing. Piano oh, the solo. mind-blowing solo, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but the, which you got strangely nervous about at the gig, didn't you? I know, because it's very simple, and if I, it's quite easy to <laughs> <laughs> just lose concentration for a second. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was the I bit I was most nervous the about. Tour, by the end of the tour, you'll be total Jerry Lee Lewis on that, <laughs> I won't you? I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Jumping on the keyboard. <laughs> oh, I, love that. I love that it ends just with our vocal as well. Yeah, right? yes, it's really good because it used to have an extra bit, and then mm. I think Chris I chopped, chopped it. it. Yeah, you chopped good, it. Very good, decision, good. Chris. Thank you. So there are a couple of, I suppose you'd call them instrumentals, and um, which is this is not is this an octagon? Again? Yeah, this is my octagon friend on this one. Yeah, doing the drums. Yeah, it's really good, and I, and I was I and we thought, well, we can't do these at the gig, but they worked really brilliantly, didn't mm. they? We sort of we worked them in 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 between songs, and it was uh, yeah, just this pounding out through that big PA. It sounded really yeah. good, Chris. Cool. This is this is me playing a, a, a no flute. <laughs> no flute. <laughs> <No script. laughs> <laughs> I think this had another this had another bit, didn't it? Or another 
instrument on oh, it. it. I remember did. we sort of we thinned it out and yeah. there's really like there's basically nothing on it. Yeah. But that's why it's kind of so cool, I think. Yeah. I can't remember what the other thing was now. No, but, but no, it, it was a bit more I built up. That. And, yeah. and yeah. actually you made some really good decisions, Chris, where you just just get rid of that and that's what we needed, you know. Yeah. Don't take a don't take a theremin with us on tour though. <laughs> no, <laughs> you should. You should. Yeah. No. I bet, um, I bet I, Grant can play one. I bet. Grant you, can. you you sort of were the theremin on this, weren't you? I was. Big... Yeah, with my big reverb pedal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Singing some very high notes. Oh, yeah, you got you got really super high, didn't you? Did. I tried to Nearly join in. Nearly passed out. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a lovely song. Tell, tell, that, so, tell people about this one. I think this was another one where you sent me the piano. This right. is my crappy piano in my flat, which I bought from a hotel, and it's got uh, it's got two uh, light fittings on it. I've never dared plug it in because I think the, the entire <laughs> building would explode. Yes. <laughs> It's really manky and old and full of moths, but I really like the sound of it. Yeah. So I just, I, just, I just recorded this and, and looped it and sent it to you. This yeah. is really cool because this is the sort of thing that if you did in a fancy studio, you wouldn't get this sound. Would no. you? And that's what I love about the piano, that mm. piano sound. And then I did, did you, in fact, record it on your phone or something? Yes, I did record I it on my it's phone. Just, yeah. yeah, it's just oh, recorded it? on your phone. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was. I I couldn't. I I I got some nice mics, but I couldn't. It just wouldn't sound any good, so I just put it on the front of the piano. Really nice sound. Um, and this is lovely. This is about you. This song, isn't it? Yeah. So my granny, who was born in nineteen. 19- 14, I think. Um, she ended up having Alzheimer's and uh, it got quite bad in, in the end. But um, while she was still aware of what was happening, but was forgetting things, she would call me little one um, because she'd called me that when I was little. <laughs> but at this point, I was. Twenty-eight-year-old, thirty-year-old woman who is anything but little, <laughs> and so she would call me little one to kind of mask the fact that she was forgetting things. And uh, this was a kind of a mad, an imagined conversation with her about going through that process. So it was—it's was, really hard to sing without getting upset. <laughs> So quite funny that she called me little one because she she'd had polio when she was a kid and so she was um, it had deformed her back and she was quite well really tiny and the fact that there was this tiny old woman calling me who's nearly six foot little one. <laughs> We're going to have to when we make other records, which we will. We, must, we should never forget that all this is is the piano and one one extra sound and you singing and it feels very complete, you know? I think that's that was what was quite nice about the process of writing as well. A lot of the songs are really short because it's just like, well, mm. we've, we don't need to add anything else, so let's just mm. leave it as it is. Um, and I think not being all in, in a studio as well, perhaps, because mm. sometimes I think if... I can imagine if we had all been together, we might have been tempted to add other other things. And Definitely. Because that wasn't really an option. Yeah, and there wasn't a time pressure with any of it either. Yeah. Which I think in the studio can influ- does it obviously influence how you create in that mm. space. Um, it was nice having the process as well of sending things between myself and Boo and then to you as well, Chris. Mm. And sort of sending it backwards and forwards and just having full 100% trust in what the other person was doing. And yeah. It was that kind of exciting thing of a bit like Christmas. You get this 
logic file and you open it up and be like, oh, what they added this time? <laughs> and then you just keep adding until you, you feel like you're done. And yeah. that was quite, that was in, a, a good fun experience, I think. I mean, you're quite you're quite prolific songwriter, Boo, aren't you? You work with a lot of mm. lot of people. Were you doing a lot of collaborating with other people at the Do, time? At the time during lockdown, or yes. was it just with Jenny, or was it like? No, it wasn't. Um, I, there's my friend Vlado Nozel, who we call ourselves Hotel Art, and we just just finished this week, haven't we, Chris? Yeah, um, and and he's a young guy from Bratislava, and very different music. What we uh, we were basically we're trying to like write lift music, weren't we? That was the idea. <laughs> so and then there was Lady Nade. I wrote her album with her and stuff like that. So a bit, but um, it was I had the joy of being able to write a lot during lockdown. It, I absolutely loved it. This is power cuts, which we're we're scared of, aren't we? Power cuts. <laughs> Well, like the, reason, the, the, the thing power cuts or the song <laughs> yeah no the, no but we're scared of the song aren't we and then every time i hear it i think oh it's really lovely <laughs> i really like and it this, this this is in seven eight because you talked about seven eight one time so i thought i'd try and write something in seven eight that's your fault i think that's Who's why you're fault? scared like the, the, well jenny was talking about <laughs> that she does stuff in seven eight and oh, I, okay i had i had tried to do that with chris Drever and failed Right. So I just said, I said, I, I started this one and thought, right, I'm going to conquer my fears. <laughs> I mean, Chris definitely has a problem playing in 7 8, doesn't he? Oh, so, no, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so but whose fault was it? <laughs> no, I've, tied, I've toured with him and he, it's like I used to start sweating when the 7 8 one came out. But, so I've, <laughs> it's conquered my fear of 7 8 this song. <laughs> And this is another thing where we did something you shouldn't do if you're like a songwriter. I did, we just I just sing the same verse twice, I think. And yeah. we in the past I think, and I think we thought about another verse, but it feels really good just singing yeah. it twice, doesn't it? I love that breaking all the rules. And, There's your, your nose flutes back again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's back again. Yeah. My nose flute in 7 8. <laughs> Finally. It's, it's what the world's sound. been waiting for, Boo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is, is that? A, that's a gamelan or something, isn't it? That. Yes, it is a gamelan, yeah. I don't know where I got some of the sounds from. I know it's a bit worrying yes, if I ever drop it. Also, I meant to message you the other day, Boo, because somebody came around to play some games at the house the other night and they were talking about turning up with their compendium. And I was like, I've never oh, heard yes. until we were sitting writing this song and you were going on about compendiums of games. And I was like, what is, I've never heard of that before. And then... I think, I think, I think... I think that might have been, as somebody pointed out, we're an intergenerational band. No, it's an <laughs> I've, I've been really hurt by that. They said that someone came up with me and said, it's so nice to see an intergenerational band. Uh, I forget that I'm, I'm <laughs> astonishingly old sometimes. <laughs> what do you mean? I think... But the funny thing was that he, they said it to Grant and, and Grant said, oh, I'm, I'm the same age as her. <laughs> <laughs> so we were wondering, wondering how much of intergenerational they thought me and Grant were different ages as well. <laughs> mm. Well, thanks that, so much. That was brilliant. That's it. That well, went very amazing. quickly. Yeah, amazing album. Um, it's a funny, I have to say, I re it's a funny thing because I make records. And I re Every time I hear this record, I, re I genuinely, genuinely, enjoy listening to it and that's a really new experience for me so thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah and thank too. you thank you thank you chris so that was uh yeah it, I, it, it, it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for what you've done so it's and like, you wow. just you just totally got it as well which was just yeah. so wonderful oh good thank you well yeah. it was uh it was really fun obviously to have these these things arrive and then be able to either do nothing to them or add some strangeness to them or just have add some AMS to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but 
but yeah, no, it's really fun. I really enjoyed it. So go so buy it, you. everyone. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. Please do. Yeah. Make them stars. <laughs> well, we'll probably already be a little bit famous by by the time this comes out. But... Oh yeah. I mean, it's probably already sold out. To be honest, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but look at this lovely garish yellow vinyl. Oh, it's oh, that's beautiful. It is great. Are you have one yet, Chris? Have you? We need to send you one. I've got one. Yeah, I'm going to frame, frame it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be. Would on you the like? Wall. Would you like? Would you like us to scribble on it, Chris? No, don't really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> scribble somewhere else. 